As what we can observe in today's world, the consumer has unlimited choices of spending his or her money on a wide range of products and services. These choices are possible due to global competition, rapid change and needs and wants of buyers. And because of this unlimited choices, we the Group 4 will present today the market identification and analysis, financial analysis and accounting basics. For the business to satisfy their customers, they need to determine who the market is for their product. Is it for all people? Is it for a selected few who have special needs? Or is it somewhere in between? I am and I will tackle about the market identification and analysis. So, what is target marketing? Target marketing is the identification and selection of markets for a business or for a product. And why is it so important? In business, each has its own preferences, price sensitivity, desire for luxury items, and amount of expendable income, making it impossible to appeal to everyone. That is why there is a target market. Identifying the target market is important for a company because it allows to tailor its advertising pricing, and promotions to appeal directly to the target audience. What is a market analysis? A market analysis is a quantitative and qualitative assessment of a market. It is an assessment which allows you to determine how suitable a particular market is for your industry. You can use market analysis to evaluate your current market, market or look at new markets. For a small business to have complete knowledge of their market, it is essential for them to perform a market analysis. Through a market analysis, a small businessman can number one, identify business opportunities. Number two, evaluate existing and potential competition. Number three, guide the choice of who they should target. And lastly, number four, indicate the custom requirements that will be satisfied by their marketing position strategy. To be successful, a business must pay constant attention to their market. This should be done so a business can see shifting requirements of buyers, be able to evaluate change in competitive position, and recognize opportunities for new products and services. Awareness It is very important for a small business person to understand the factors affecting market complexity because these factors can explain why markets change. If there is a complete understanding of why markets change, the business will be in a better position to anticipate market change and competitive threats. Markets usually change for four reasons. Firstly, the shifts in buyers' needs. Next, new technologies. Third, socioeconomic forces. And last is the competitive action. Next up is market opportunity analysis. The majority of strategic decisions made by a small business can be done through identifying and analyzing your product. This is an approach that can be done in a five-step process. Number one, is defining product market boundaries and structure. Number two is describing and analyzing end users. Number three, industry analysis. Fourth step, value added system analysis. Fifth step, analysis of key competitors. And lastly, market sizes estimation. Market opportunity analyze, analysis is a tool to determine and access the desirability of a business opportunity. It forms a portion of the business strategy wherein before launching a new product or service the market is analyzed to identify the anticipated revenues and profits for, from it next is market segmentation now that you have understanding of where your small business stands it is time to take all the information you have collected and use it to segment your market market segmentation is the process of identifying and analyzing the buyers in a product market with similar characteristics Segmentation allows matching your products or services with buyer's requirements. Market characteristics using three major subgroups. If you want to examine the differences among the buyers and categorize them into subgroups of the total market, you can break down your market characteristics using three major subgroups. Um, so these are the demographic characteristics, age, sex, income, education, stages in life cycle, social class, occupation, religion, and race. For example, demographic information that you acquired showed that your customers will likely be female from a middle-class family ages between 20 and 25. Um, next up is psychological characteristics. First is personality and the second is lifestyle. For example, if you determine that your product appeals to people who are physically fit, 
you can promote an aspect of your product that encourages fitness. Um, third is geographic characteristics. Rural, urban, rural, suburban, region, climate, city size, and pop- population density. Um, for example, if you operate your business in a warm area, but your product appeals to those who live in colder climates, you'll have to decide whether it's better to relocate to that area or perhaps offer your products by direct mail or the internet. Thank you. With the help of market analysis, businesses can gain valuable information about certain market. If you are setting up a business, want to investigate your current market or simply look at new markets, a market analysis helps you to identify and assess the opportunities and risks of a market. On the basis of market analysis, you can develop concrete marketing strategies and successfully implement your business idea. Financial analysis. Financial analysis is an aspect of overall business finance function that involves examining historical data to gain information about the current and future financial health of a company. Financial analysis can be applied in a wide variety of situations to give business managers the information they need to make critical decisions. The ability to understand financial data is essential for any business manager. Finance is the language of business. Business goals and objectives are set in financial terms and their outcomes are measured in financial terms. The next reporter will cover the most common types of financial analysis performed by professionals. What is financial analysis? Well, financial analysis involves using financial data to assess a company's performance and make recommendations about how it can improve going forward. Financial analysts primarily carry out their works in Excel using a spreadsheet to analyze historical data and make projections of how they think the company will perform in the future. Next are goals and objectives. The main objectives of financial analysis includes 1. is solvency, 2. is profitability, 3. liquidity, and 4. is stability. But what is solvency? Solvency is one of the most important goals of financial analysis is to assess the ability of a business to pay back its debts, short-term and long-term, to its creditors. The liquidity of a business entity is reflected in its balance sheet. Next is profitability. Another goal of a financial analysis aims is to assess the profitability of a firm. Here, profitability refers to a firm's ability to earn income and sustain its growth in both long-term and short-term. Next is liquidity. In addition to the aforesaid goals and objectives, a financial analysis reports about the firm's ability to sustain positive cash flow in addition to satisfying current debts. And lastly, stability. Stability implies the ability of a business firm to maintain its existence in the long run. The next discussion are the type of financial analysis. First is vertical, next is horizontal, next is leverage, next is growth, next is profitability, next is liquidity, next is efficiency, next is cash flow, next are rates of return, next is valuation, next is scenario and sensitivity, and last is variance. First is vertical analysis. Vertical analysis involves looking at various components of the income statement and dividing them by revenue to express them as a percentage. This process is also sometimes called a common-sized income statement as it allows an analysis to compare companies of different sizes by evaluating their margins instead of their dollars. Next is horizontal analysis. Horizontal analysis involves taking several years of financial data and comparing them to each other to determine a growth rate. This will help an analysis determine if a company is growing or declining and identifying important trends. Next is leverage analysis. Leverage ratios are one of the most common method analysis used to evaluate company performance. A single financial metric like total rep may not be that insightful on its own, so it's helpful to compare it to a company total equity to get a full picture of the capital structure. Next is growth rates. Analyzing historical growth rates and projecting future ones are a big part of any financial analysis job. Next is profitability analysis. Profitability is a type of income statement analysis where analysis assess how attractive the economics of a business are. Next is liquidity analysis. A type of financial analysis that focuses on the balance sheet, particularly a company's ability to meet short-term obligations, those due in less than a year. Efficiency analysis. 
efficiency ratios are an essential part of any robust financial analysis. These ratios look at how well a company manages its assets and use them to generate revenue and cash flow. Next is cash flow. A cash flow statement is a financial statement that summarizes the amount of cash and cash equivalents entering and leaving a company. As they say in finance, cash is king and thus a big emphasis is placed on company's ability to generate cash flow. Next is rates of return. A rates of return is measured to all profit as a percentage of investment. At the end of the day, investors, lenders, and finance professionals in general are focused on what type of risk-adjust rate of return they can earn on their money. As such, assessing rates of return of investments or ROI is critical in the industry. Next is valuation analysis. The process of estimating what is a business is worth is a major component of financial analysis and professionals in the industry spend a great deal of time building financial models in Excel. Next is scenario and sensitive analysis. Another component of financial modeling and valuation is performing scenarios and sensitivity analysis as a way of measuring risk. Building scenarios and performing sensitivity analysis can help determine what the worst case or best case future for a company could look like. And lastly, variance analysis. Variance analysis is the process of comparing actual results to a budget or forecast. It is a very important part of the internal planning and budgeting process at a operating company, particularly for professionals working in the accounting and financial departments. All of the discussed methods are commonly performed in Excel using a wide range of formulas, functions, and keyboard shortcuts. Analysts need to be sure they are using best practices when performing their work given the anonymous value that's at stake and the propensity of large data sets to have errors. To summarize, financial statements analysis is concerned with analyzing the balance sheet and the income statement of a business to interpret the business and financial relations of a business for financial representations, business evaluations in addition to financial forecasting. Accounting basics will introduce you to some of the fundamental accounting principles, concepts, and terminology. Some of the terms that you will learn would include revenues, expenses, assets, liabilities, income statements, balance sheet, statement of cash flow, etc. Basically, the main purpose of financial accounting is to provide useful financial information to people or groups, both inside and outside of companies, often called external users. Accounting basics is an integral part for financial analysis to learn. So, sit back, focus, and learn the accounting. Hey guys, now that we have defined marketing identification and analysis and financial analysis, now let us discuss accounting basics. But before we go to accounting basics, let us let me first share to you the common accounting terminologies that we will encounter in this topic. So the first terminology is transaction. Transaction means an event or a business activity which involves exchange of money or monies worth between parties. Next is profit. Profit is the excess of revenue income over expense. It could be calculated for each transaction or for business as a whole. Next is loss. Loss is the excess of expense over income. It could be calculated for each transaction or business as a whole. Next is asset. Asset is a source owned by the business for the purpose of using it for generating future profits. Assets can be tangible and intangible. Next is liability. It is an obligation of financial nature to be settled at a future date if the present amount of money that the business owes to the other party. Capital. Capital is the amount invested in the business by its owner. It may be in the form of cash, goods, or any other asset which the proprietor or partners of business invest in the business activity. Now that we have finished the terminologies, now let us proceed to business. Business usually prepares three reports. These reports are a statement of financial position referred to as balance sheet. 
Next is income statement. Then lastly, statement of cash flow. Now let us proceed to balance sheet. Balance sheet, it is the statement of financial position of the business entity on a particular date. It lists all assets, liabilities, and capital. It describes what the business owns and what the business owes to obtain, which denotes liabilities, and to the owners, which denotes capital. Balance sheet accounts. Balance sheet accounts composes of asset accounts, liability accounts, and stockholders' equity accounts. Examples of asset accounts are cash, accounts receivable, supplies, and equipment. Examples of liability accounts are notes payable, accounts payable, and wages payable. Example of stockholders' equity accounts are common stock and retained earnings. Let us note that the whole financial accounting demands on accounting equation, which is also known as balance sheet equation. The basic equation is assets equal to liabilities plus owner's equity, or A is equal to L plus P, where A is equal to assets, L is equal to liabilities, P is equal to capital. Income statement. Profit and loss account or income statement. This account shows the revenue earned by the business and the expenses incurred by the business to earn that revenue. Income statement will show how profitable a business has been during the time interval. Income statement accounts composes of revenue accounts, expense accounts. Examples of revenue accounts include service revenues and investment revenues. While examples of expense accounts include wages expense, rent expense, and depreciation expenses. The difference in the purpose of balance sheet and income statement. A balance sheet is a document that tracks a company's assets, liabilities, and owner's equity at a specific point in time. To know if the company has something, it belongs to someone. The purpose of the income statement is to show a company's profitability during a specific period of time. Below is an example of sample transactions. Now below is an example of trial balance. In trial balance, you don't want to run your financial reports until you know for sure that your data is good. The trial balance report totals of all the debits and credits in the chart of accounts to make sure debit is equal to credits. Now next is an example of balance sheet. The accounts that are reported on the balance sheet are shaded. Assets, liabilities, and equity. Recall the accounting equation we have learned above, which is assets is equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. Now below is an example of income statement. If a company's income exceeds its expenses, then the company has made a profit. If expenses exceed income, then the company has a loss. This is why the income statement is also called the profit and loss report. Financial analysis is one of the key tools needed by managers of a business to examine how their organization is performing. For this reason, they are always querying the financial analysis about the profitability, cash flows, and other financial aspects of their businesses. It is noteworthy that while preparing the financial analysis for a company, the analysts focus on the balance sheet, the cash flow statement, and the income statement. Besides, one important area involved in financial analysis is the exploiting firm's past performance into future performance.